What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here. And in this video, I'm going to do a commentary of how to beat the new dual destiny mission. Uh, it released today, and this is how you farm your exotic class items. So it wasn't as I was hoping, which would be solo legend and master lost sectors or whatever they're called now, expert and whatever. This mission is quite long. It's probably gonna take you between 35 and 45 minutes roughly. And um, yeah, so anyways, I've ran it a few times because we wiped literally with just like seconds left on our first run. And then I ran it on my hunter. That's, I was on my hunter the first time and then I ran it again and uh, my footage was all zoomed in. <laughs> so I couldn't do a commentary because you couldn't see like the uh, buffs on the left side of the screen. You can see I'm darkness aligned. So at the very beginning, uh, my other, oh my, God, my partner K Dog, he is light aligned. So he will stand on all the light plates through this mission, and I will stand on the dark plates. So he was a light subclass, he was solar, and then I was prismatic, so it gave me darkness. Where we both ran it on our hunters on dark, or sorry, on prismatic, and um, I was light aligned. So this video won't show where the light plates are. There's me dying like a dumbass, shooting a GL. Uh, so this will be from the darkness perspective, but it's pretty easy to find the light plates as well. And that's all that really changes. So this first part, you saw us running by a bunch of ads. That's because you can literally just like run by them all. And then there's a plate in that corner. So k Dog is gonna turn around here and go to that light plate. And then I am gonna take the darkness plate and then that's gonna let us through to the next area. So um, you kind of get a two for one on this video because this was my first time running my uh, Synthesep Consecration build. Literally just put it on before this mission. So I've like before uh, uh, Final Shape even launched, I knew I was going to run this build. Uh, Syntheseps are my favorite exotic and I knew it would just pair really nicely. So you will see the insane power of this build. I have the Glacier or sorry, the stasis super on because with Syntheseps, it's like the highest total damage super in the game. And you'll see it absolutely crushes these bosses. So um, yeah, there's just me checking my artifact because like I said, I just got this set up. So anyways, how this one works is obviously I'm on the dark plate, like I said, and down below is the light plate. So he's down below and he's killing uh, Taken Phalanx that has like a light uh, shield. And then when he kills it, it's going to drop a mode of light and he picks that up and then that will give him a symbol. So I'm just going to speed this up. Basically, you kill all these adds and once you kill enough adds, uh, there's a darkness knight that spawns in the back right there. So that's servile knight. So I'm going to kill him. Again, being an idiot with my GL. So when I kill him, now you see I have mode of darkness and there's two boxes there. So I've got one out of two. And then you can see there's symbols for me to shoot. These symbols are like from the Vow of the Disciple raid. So you can call them what you want. Just make sure you and your teammate know, uh, like are on the same page for symbols. One thing that you can do and that me and my friend k Dog did is we're on PC. So we were in Discord and we just shared our streams with each other. So that's really helpful for the clock section of this mission, which we'll get to. So there I pick up my second mode of darkness. So that's going to show me all the symbols that I have available to shoot. And then he has symbols spawning down low and he's gonna read them to me left to right. It's important you shoot them in order from left to right uh, because if you if I had shot that second symbol first, um, you're gonna fail. So we discovered that on our run because in this next part, he was actually reading these backwards because he wasn't reading from inside the pedestals that they spawn on, which I'll show you. So we thought maybe uh, darkness had to read right to left, but no, it's always left to right. Um, so again, now we're killing uh, our knight in phalanx. So I've got one mode of darkness. And then there's my first symbol, dark sun or black sun, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to speed this up. And you can see like Monte Carlo is just giving me my melee back like crazy. It's unreal. Um, so yeah, now I pick up the second mode of darkness and I get my second symbol. So I've got like uh, dark sun and light sun. And then we're going to get this third knight. And then that's going to give me my third symbol. And then I read that to him. So he was reading from down below. But if you go up in front, that's left to right. 
So, uh, here, I think we actually yeah, screwed up. So, um, yes. You see it? Wait. No, no, but... So, I gotta do left to stop. right right now? Stop. Right to left. Stop. Light sun and dark sun. Oh, okay. So, again, from oh, our run weird. before, we thought it was right to left because he was reading the symbols from down below instead of in front of the pedestals. So, right there, you can see he shoots. And we get the paracausal energy dissipates. So that's not what you want uh, because we shot it out of order. So if you do that, if you mess up, then you have to go back through and get three new motes of darkness and motes of light. Like uh, So we both have to collect new motes. So this slowed us down and there is a timer, as you can see, on the left hand side. And then when you get to certain points in this mission, um, it's going to extend the timer. But I think it generally only extends it by 10 minutes. So if you're slow on one section, you're only going to have like 10 minutes to beat the next section. But if you're fast on one section, say we finish this with like 15 minutes, then we're going to go up to 25 minutes. So uh, like you can have a lot of time if you're quick. So that's kind of why I wanted to make this video to kind of just show how to be as quick and efficient as possible. So by doing that, um, you want to take out the ads as quickly as you can. When I was on my Hunter, I have a Bad Juju Celestial Nighthawk build, and Bad Juju absolutely shreds, and you never have to reload that thing. Pulse Rifle's got a buff, and it's an exotic primary. It's absolutely wrecking. And then I was getting so many Nighthawks, so I could just one-shot those Servile while I was on Phalanxes on uh, my Hunter. But yeah, you can one-shot them. It's great for the Tormentors that come later in this mission. So yeah, can't recommend Celestial enough. Right. So here... This time, this time um, I'm telling yeah, him left to right, first. so he's going to shoot those second. symbols left to right. So it says energy gathers around you, energy clings to you, so that's two out of three right, and then energy tears to you. Good shit, okay, so it is left to right. Okay. It is left to right, I was just down here looking up. That's funny. So yeah. There's us realizing he's just reading from a different spot. So then um, you do this again. And this one you need four symbols. So here's my knight. And then on the other side, it's really easy to find the phalanx. It's just over there where K-Dog is. And then um, again, the rolls switch. So that one, I was doing the symbol callouts and he was shooting. So then for this one, he's going to do the symbol callouts and I'm going to shoot. So I'm just going to speed this up because it's literally... The same as before, you just kill the enemies as fast as you can, which spawns in the knight. When the knight spawns in, you take him out, you pick up your mode of darkness, get four of them, and then you're going to shoot four symbols. There's a consecration, easily one shots the knight, so it's pretty crazy. So he's telling me the symbols. And what you want to do is just make 100% sure you know the symbols. It never hurts to double and triple check um, because if you mess up, you're gonna have to get four more modes of darkness, which takes quite a bit of time. So make sure you're shooting the right ones, shoot them left to right. I'm making sure I have the right ones. We're just communicating back and forth, just double checking. I don't know if there's a time limit on these. We weren't like taking a super long time to shoot them, um, but yeah. You, you do have some time, as you could see. So then once we get through that, we still have about five minutes left. Yeah, I never really LFG'd that day one follows, and, then... and then I'm just going to fast forward here. This is just a jumping part. Yeah. So I had Indebted Kindness with Bad Juju in my other run. And um, it's really good for taking out like Grimm's. I mean, these special sidearms are so freaking good, the rocket sidearms. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend running one. I just ran a sniper on this one because I knew I was going to be doing most of my ad clear with my consecrations. So I had a sniper for tormentors and then edge transit for everything else. But yeah, the little rocket sidearm is great right here for taking those grim out, or you can take them out kind of like when you spawn in. So anyways, this is just a jumping puzzle. So just follow the path that you're seeing. I do mess up the pathing at one point. Um, but yeah, so you, here you just jump to there, then you jump down to these stairs, then you come through here. And then what you want to do is uh go left where i went straight and then i got kind of mixed up here so i'm just gonna fast forward and go back to the front of the room 
Oh, and then I found a secret actually. So I'll actually rewind that. So I came down here and then there's kind of uh, this little thing. And then, yeah, so that gives you two minutes. So those could be through. If you notice, I'm at 9.48, 9.42 when I shoot it. And then it goes to 11.42. So that's a way to get a bit of extra time as well. I don't know where all these are, but just something kind of handy to know. So then um, I traverse back to where we came in. And then you just jump up on this side stuff, go through here. So this is where we came in. And then up on the side stuff, up to him. And then again, there's light and darkness plates. So um, I'm darkness again. So this time I'm kind of going to the left where when I was on my hunter, I was going to the ones on the right. And yeah, we're just kind of looking at the environment and stuff. Uh, we had it pretty down, so we knew we weren't going to be like too pressed for time. But on your first run, once you're getting used to the mechanics and stuff, it's pretty tight. Like I said, we lost. The boss was like so close to dying and we hit zero seconds. So here's your first set of plates. You jump on them and then he's going to go right and I'm going to go left. So there's his plate. Once you step on the plates, those little things come out. And you could see part of his light plate over there. So now I'm looking for my darkness plate. And there it is. So I stand on that and we're good to go. Then my darkness plate's actually on the other side. So here you have to switch sides. So I decide to just go up here and then I'm just gonna super all these ads. Because you have to kill them anyways. Uh, so it just makes it a little safer when you're down there standing on the plate. Because you're kind of exposed. So there's my plate back there. And then I actually find a feather here up top. See, you can see it glowing on the top left. I just miss it. Um, but then I'm going to jump up to it. So yeah, we activate our final plate. Which is going to let us through the next part. Grab the feather. And here you can see K-Dog come up for the feather. So you can actually jump up there. And then jump over. And then we stand on the plates. So this is, I call it like the clock room. And there's tormentors that spawn. So I had a linear fusion uh, paired with my indebted kindness and bad juju. It was very, very good. Highly recommend a linear fusion. And then Celestial Nighthawk was able to like one bang them. So whoever kills the tormentor will get a buff. And then they're the ones that's going to shoot the clock. So what we were doing... Uh, was he would say his numbers to me and then I'm looking and then I write down the numbers that are the same so then it's the so see I have like if this is a clock it's not quite a clock because there's only nine but we're still just going right to left like a clock would and calling them one through nine you could also call them like two through ten if you were trying to like represent a true clock because you don't have 11 12 and one but in the boss room, it is a real clock. But anyways, we were calling top right one, um, the one that's 90 degrees to the right. That one's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So again, he would tell me what his symbols are there. So I have one, three, five, and then it looks like seven, eight, nine. So then he's going to tell me what his are. And when I was a line, so I have one, three, five, seven, eight, nine, and then I forgot to write his down, uh, but I should have, and then I screw up a consecration. But again, it's just take out as many ads as possible, and eventually you're going to spawn in tormentors. So now the tormentor comes in, and yeah, I can't hit shots. <laughs> And then there's also a ton of ads. So yeah, you want to read your symbols kind of as soon as possible. Because once that tormentor is like going ham, uh, it's pretty dangerous. And I don't think that you can. So there he takes me out of my transcendence. I'm just getting bullied by him. I don't think you can finish these ones. They're like boss type tormentors. So yeah, just be wary. So I kill it. Now I have harmonic sundering for 28 seconds. So while I have that buff, I can shoot those little nodes. When that timer goes away, we're going to have to kill another Tormentor. So you really want to make sure that you shoot shoot the uh, correct things when you have the chance. So our same ones. 
I'll uh, let that play. It's gonna be Smash Player first. Yep. Oop. Oh, I don't know how I skipped so far back there. Oh. Yeah, what the hell? I don't know what I hit. Three, four, four. So he's telling right. me his symbols again. One, three, five, seven, eight, nine. Or no, what are what are yours? I had I had two, three, four, uh, four. And then seven, eight, nine. Yeah, seven, eight, nine. So I was just confirming. Yeah, we're good. And uh, yeah, you can see my timer is ticking. Four, uh, so four. when you kill that tormentor, you do want to be ready to shoot. Because you don't yeah, have seven, like 28 seconds is a fair bit of time, but yeah, you you definitely don't want to miss that. And if you shoot a wrong one, it's gonna be that same thing where you have to kind of just start everything over, just like with the symbols. If you shot a wrong symbol, so you really don't want to mess it up. And then you have to do this three times. So here's another tormentor. We take everything out. Consecration is awesome for this. So he's telling me his. And then I'm looking at mine. And then I know which ones I have to shoot. So I super on this guy. And again, you can't really freeze them or suppress them because it's boss. So shoot him in the crit. Now I have the thing. And we shot our three same ones. So now it's just rinse, repeat one more time. So again, just take out a ton of adds. Eventually Tormentor spawns. Whoever kills the Tormentor shoots the thing. I was the one trying to kill the Tormentor just cause I was like pretty confident in shooting the things. So that's what you want to do. We do it right at the end. Seven, eight, nine. So one, two, four, seven, eight, nine. Those are mine. Four, seven, eight, nine. I got three, four, five, six, seven, nine. So he said three, four, six, seven, nine. So four, seven, and nine are three, the same four, ones. Five, six, seven, nine. Four, seven, nine. Then. So then I just write down the ones that are the the matching ones where we both have the same one. That's what you should do. Again, we're kind of new to this, but um, yeah. That's what you do want to be doing. So I'm getting hit by this guy on the left. I'm gonna take him out, get my health regen going. Just use all my prismatic crap. Try to clear the battlefield. Get suppressed. Then I shoot four, seven, nine. And then boom, you're done. So we had like 11 minutes left. Is that right? Yeah. And then we go to 17. So this one gives you about six minutes. So then it's just more traversal. So this part, uh, again, just take out the ads as fast as you possibly can. Consecration is great for group ad clear. Um, if you saw my Titan build video on uh, Thunderclap, that would also be really good. And if you saw my Warlock Fellwinner's Helm video, I haven't ran it on Warlock, only Hunter and Titan, but I am going to do the Warlock one and I'm gonna use that build. I just wanted to get this guide out there first to help people get their exotic class items, but I wanted to run it on light and dark side just to see if there was like any differences. So, um, yeah, there really isn't. It's just a difference in, like, what plates you go to. And, like, the order that you shoot the symbols. But both people have to do, like, the same mechanics at the end of the day. So, again, I talked about how good Syntheseps is. Obviously, I get suppressed eventually, but I was able to do quite a bit of damage to both those Tormentors. So, again, everything is just about speed. You just want to be getting these things dead as quickly as possible. <clears throat> This was my first time running this build and there was a couple times when I went to like slide and do the consecration and it just did my my um, frenzied blade melee. I don't know if I was hitting melee just a second too soon into my slide or what, but yeah, that happened to me a couple times. So yeah, we melt those guys and then there's just more plates to stand on. So we stand on our plates. And then it's just kind of rinse, repeat. You just uh, keep running, find your plates, stand on them. Oh no, I'm sorry. That was the end of it. So here is the boss room. And there was 
I'm just looking now. As we go through here, on the right, it looks like there's something right over here. Uh, maybe not. Maybe up here. I thought I kind of saw something. Anyway, maybe that's another secret area you can go and find like another crystal to extend time. But here we're 14 minutes going into the boss room. And then you get 10 more minutes, as you'll see right away here. Probably as soon as we stand on our plates. So there we get 10 more minutes. Um, and then we'll see where we end up with the boss fight. But yeah, uh, if you were getting there with just a few seconds left, then this could be pretty tough because the boss fight's not like super easy. Here I am just missing a ton of shots while I'm radiant, which sucks. And then some knights fucking spawn right in front of me. There's enemies spawning in all over this battlefield. Um... It's tough to stay alive, so I just try to, like, deal as much damage as I can, and then I usually just, like, die. But it doesn't really matter. I think both people can be dead at the same time as well, so you don't have to worry about wiping. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, like, 99% sure. Because I think even one time on this run, both of us were dead. So, yeah, just kind of take out ads as much as you can and deal damage to the boss. And then there's more mechanics coming up. So you can see this wizard had, like, a darkness shield on it. So there's one light wizard that you have to kill and one dark wizard. So just the same as the rooms before. So I take mine out. And then uh, that's going to allow me to see the symbols to shoot. And when he takes his out, he's going to be able to see the symbols that I have to shoot. So he's calling out to me what symbols I have to shoot. But again, we had our Discord chats open. So I could confirm just to make sure we were talking the same symbols. Even though it's stop, guardian, and pyramid, or triangle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah. So here, I get slowed and died. Try to res your teammates if you can, because you always spawn like outside the boss room, so it uh, loses a bit of time. So this is pretty crazy with Prismatic and this triple consecration build. You can just like keep doing slams over and over. It's honestly pretty wild how strong this is. One thing that hurts it is getting slowed because you can't do your freaking slides, so that was quite annoying. So then uh, you just have to take out a bunch more adds, and now this other guy spawns in, a strand uh, omen or whatever they're called. Subjugator. So yeah, pop your supers as much as possible. Celestial Nighthawk, I had a debuff and Radiant and a Nighthawk shot, and it wasn't enough to do one third health. Um, so they are very, very tanky, uh, probably at least a million damage on each, uh, each third of their health bar. That's just a guess. I don't know the exact damage, but yeah, they're pretty tanky. So bring some DPS. Like I have this God roll edge transit with NVS bait and switch. Very, very good. And then, like I said, the sniper was nice just for the tormentors, but you can switch your loadouts throughout here. Like I did swap, uh, on my hunter. I swapped from a um, from that linear during the Tormentor spot uh, to to a GL in here. Even though the linears actually do good damage on those bosses too. So there's my symbols. So I'm just reading those symbols out to him. And then he has to kill his wizard. And then he's going to shoot those three symbols. And when he does, uh, you get the destabilization intensifies on the left. And then it says they're vul vulnerable, this Expector oh, Yemek. So then that means you can deal damage to him again. So I'm just testing out my Consecration, going crazy. Damage is just damage. There's no mechanics here. Just melt them as quick as possible. Use your Prismatic, use your Supers. Oh yeah, and he suspends you. Then there's my wizard. So now this is the toughest part. So there is the full clock. So I had one, uh, one, two, five, six, and then there is like two, eight, uh, ten, eleven. So you could write down what your same ones are, but what we're doing is we're just looking at each other's screens, or more, I'm looking at his screen, and I'm writing down the one that is the same. So I have three, four, seven, and nine there. So he had a three, so that's our matching one. This one, our matching one is 12. So I write down 12. And then we get one more matching one. 
And again, you want to take your time here. You don't want to screw this up. I think it's 10. So yeah, we were a little late there because I was looking at his screen, but he was killing ads, so I couldn't see it. So now we're just waiting to confirm. So I tell him, just shoot 10. Yeah, 10, shoot it. So we shoot 10, and then we're just going to need to shoot 3 three. and 12. So then we shoot, shoot 3. No, down. Down one? No, oh, no, yeah. God. He shot the wrong one. He shot 4. Or er, he shot 2. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. he didn't shoot 3. So uh, you can no, see... Down. Down one? No, bro. Oh, my God. Incorrect node, Good barrier clock. frequency changing. Yeah, yeah. So now I think... I think so yeah, again, that's just a time loss, but we have lots of time. But that's oh, what happens. And if you mess that up at any point, you're going to have to redo this whole thing. So now, again, we just go through and we confirm our matching ones. So we had 12 matching. We have 8 matching. So I'd tell him, just shoot 2 right now so we can get on with it. While there's no ads. And then shoot 12. And then line up 8. And then I'm like, just line up 8 so as soon as it's up, you're good to kill. So then he shoots it. We get barrier strength as greatly diminished. Barrier is down. So we take the barrier down, and now um, I think that's the end of it. Uh, there's the strand guide to kill and the stasis guy to kill. So again, I'm just using my awesome super with biotic enhancements. Does lots of damage. It's really good. You can't see the health bar, unfortunately, but it's chunking him for sure. But again, I get slowed, which is the bane of my existence. Hate not being able to move in this game. It's very frustrating. And you can see when I spawn back in, I'm way outside of the boss room. So here, I'm just taking them out with consecrations to get some good footage. And then we still have Yemek, the strand subjugator. So I'm just going to pop my prismatic for him. And just go to town again. Here, I'll let you see. Damage a consecration with biotic enhancements. It's crazy. Like, look at that chunk. That's pretty big chunks. Like I said, these guys are pretty beefy. Nice. Look at that build, huh? Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> and you get three. That's insane. Yeah, that is busted as hell. So then you run up here. I mean, the rest is pretty self-explanatory, yeah, really. I was more wanting to explain I'm the just mechanics and stuff. So they were both uh, about 35 minutes or 35 to 40. I think so yeah, remember. basically you stand on your plates. It does this. Kills you, yeah. get up, then you gotta do battle for some reason, and then Sabathun like, oh, baits you into killing yeah, your buddy. So you can just kill each other quickly just to get it over with. Then you have to crush his ghost. And then she just laughs at you for being an asshole. And then, there it is. There's your exotic class item, and that is how you farm them from what I've heard. Uh, oh, or you can get them right. on a small drop chance from chess in the pale heart. So I got Severance Enclosure and Kepri's Horn. So I might mess around with that. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's it for the video. I hope it was helpful. Hope it helps you uh, beat the mission. Um, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Take care.